Over 40% of Americans in the last three years have lost or changed jobs. Therefore, over 40% of you probably listening have an old 401k. In fact, probably a lot of you are saying, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I have that old 401k, but it's only got $10,000 in it or it only has $40,000 in it. And you know, I'm just going to let it sit and do what it's doing. I'm telling you, that is a, that is a fatal move. It is a huge mistake. Welcome back, everybody, to another week of the Wealth Webinar Series. Today is the day you learn something I learned many years ago, and that is how to be the bank. But see, you heard the video that we were just playing, and we always talk about being the bank using specially designed and engineered whole life. But what if you could be the bank with your retirement funds? Well, that's what Greg Herlin is going to talk about, and me and Steven are just going to be back up today. But today you're going to learn one of the things that Greg taught me back in 2014. I'll never forget him and Mike go up on the stage. I'm just a little peon, brand new to this whole thing, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to flip my way to make millions of dollars. I'm going to be on that stage after I get our TV show. This is the way my mind was thinking. And I remember some key words Greg said from that stage. He gets up there and he says, the ultimate in real estate is being the bank. And I'm like, well, that sounds pretty cool. But what I thought is I thought I needed millions of dollars. So the first train that I got on was let's flip, 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 make millions of dollars. And then when we have millions, then we can be the bank. And holy crap, did I waste a bunch of years trying to do that. I added a bunch of gray hairs to the side of my head and my chest. And today I know how being your bank actually works. And that's what we're gonna teach you today. And I, I can't stress the importance of this message and what you're going to learn today, given what's happening in the markets and what's about to happen to the economy. If any of you have been sleeping or kind of had your head under a rock or in the sand, guess what? We're in a collision course with a recession. The Fed is going to put us in a recession, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's sooner than later. The technical analysis of what a recession is, is about to happen. And most people have not gotten their 401k statements or their IRA statements because they come at the end of this month. And a lot of people don't even look until the statement shows up in the mail. And then when they do, they usually fall out of their chair. Well, put the seatbelt on this time because I'm telling you, it's going to be a rough ride. So get ready because today what we're going to teach you and what Greg's going to really drive home is how you can be the bank using your qualified funds, put yourself back in control, shun off all this market volatility and stocks going up, down, mostly down these days, and how you can actually make money when everybody else is losing money, and how you can do it by changing just one thing. So welcome to the show, Greg. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me, Chris. I love it. Thanks for the intro. Absolutely. All right. Well, look, I, you, you mentioned a few things and uh, that are near and dear to my heart, but you know, it, the People typically don't get too excited when you start talking about um, the IRS and tax rules, et cetera, uh, and, and investing in real estate even until until the last six months, what, what happened and what we've been seeing. Not only, obviously, uh, inflation, but the market, obviously, is just just crazy. And, and, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but this is... You know, the real estate market year after year has been consistent. Sure, there's been 2008s and 9s in our lives where the market has totally, um, not only the stock market, but obviously the real estate, real estate market as well. But real estate has consistently beat the stock market. And not only that, it's, it's given more flexibility. And so for me, when you and I met in 2014, uh, I did talk about being the bank. Uh, uh, I, I do feel like that is that is a critical or a very important thing for passive income. But um, I think you've also gone to another level that now I'm involved with as well as obviously banking and these insurance policies. And so uh, I do that as well. I think you brought that to me, uh, frankly, um, I, I was aware of it, but just never understood it until you came along. So um, thank you for that. So I'm actually doing both things now. So for me, having these policies and banking with my policies is one thing I'm here to talk about the other side, which is, really trying to get gains in a way where you're not paying taxes. Most of you that are listening to this, you know, the, the two things I like to focus on are, you know, if you're looking for money, I'm going to talk about how to find money for businesses or deals, whatever it may be. Um, if you're not looking for money, but looking to, you know, look, you have money, you're looking to avoid paying taxes. That's the other thing I'm going to talk about. 
Um, so in general, what we do is we help people structure and set up um, self-directed or retirement plans to help them invest in assets or things that they understand. And so that typically is, you know, in my world, real estate, but that's not in everyone's world. A lot of people, a lot of you probably even listen today or in the, you know, maybe in the, I hate even saying it right now, right? The crypto Bitcoin world, uh, which is real, right? It exists. And maybe it is the right time to buy if, if that's, that's, that's your cup of tea. Um, or it could be investing in businesses. Um, for many of you, um, you know, just, just, you, you would probably already have even an old 401k. And that's something I want to touch on a little bit stronger today is over 40% of Americans in the last three years have lost or changed jobs. Therefore, over 40% of you probably listening have an old 401k. In fact, probably a lot of you are saying, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I have that old 401k, but it's only got $10,000 in it or it only has $40,000 in it. And you know, I'm just going to let it sit and do what it's doing. I'm telling you that is a that is a fatal move. It is a huge mistake, you know, putting your money um, or leaving your money in a in a place um, that you, that you have little little control over and little say. And 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 the, the most common thing I hear from some, some people saying is that man, I want to prepare for passive and I want to be a banker. I want passive income. I don't want to pay taxes, but they do nothing about it. So most of you that have this old 401k, I'm telling you right now, you can roll over transfer your 401k into a self-directed account, which is something that we do on you know hundreds every single month. We help people set those accounts up. So now your retirement funds, you can invest not only in the stock market, which is still an option, but in other alternative assets like real estate, like businesses, like gold and precious metals, things that might be a little bit more tangible and understanding. And so for me, um, that's where I've had my success is in the beginning, uh, what I did is, is kind of, I, I, Chris was talking about gray hairs. I got my own gray hairs, but, but it was worth it. I don't feel bad about it. I actually was in a place where I could not, I wanted, I wanted to start saving in my retirement account, but I could only save a little bit of money. So I was trying to do flips and I was doing flips, making more and more money and then putting a, a certain amount of my money into re a retirement account and then continue to do some investments in my retirement account in the real estate world where I didn't have to pay taxes. And so little by little, my retirement account got pretty big. I mean, you just, I mean, you can, I'll give an example. I'll give you one example. I actually did. I started, I did this, you know, 15 years ago and I'm still doing it today. Last month, I bought a property with my IRA. It was $70,000. Uh, it's a, a little one bedroom, right? $70,000 is not very much in, in Las Vegas. It's a, a one, it's a $70,000 property. I bought it for 70. Um, and we're going to put probably about 25,000 into it. And we will probably make between 20 and $30,000 net net. And I'll do that in 90 days. So a $90,000 investment for my IRA is going to turn into a hundred and probably 10 to $120,000, almost a, almost a 30% rate of return in 90 days. And so so these kind of gains that are happening when the stock market's falling, you know, falling apart all around us and the real estate market's not affordable or the rates are going up, et cetera, there's so many opportunities. That example is what I used to do outside of my IRA. Why did I do it outside my IRA? Because I need to pay my bills. So I was doing that to pay my bills. And as I started doing that, I started saving some of those profits and putting them into retirement accounts so I could do a couple deals inside my retirement account. And so by by introducing um, what you currently are investing in right now, whatever it is that you're investing in right now, be it even the stock market or not, you should be doing that inside a self-directed IRA. And the, and the reason why I, and the reason why Chris wanted me to talk about this, um, a couple reasons, but one in particular is, is there's massive gains to be had when you're doing, you're investing in a tax sheltered environment. You and I, Chris and I can both invest in the same property, the same investment, mine in an IRA and Chris is outside of his IRA. And the difference is I'm going to pay nothing in my taxes if we split the deal and he'll have to pay between 10 or probably more like 20 to 30%, probably around 20%. So I could actually essentially make 20% less in my investments, 20% less and do the same returns as Chris. Chris has to work harder, make bigger returns just to catch up to what I'm doing inside of my IRA. And if you start playing with the compounding interest, which I've, I've shared, I think, before in a webinar with you guys, 
Um, well, some of you might've heard me, but if you start talking about compound interest and what that means over, you know, making an extra two or three or 4% over a 10 or 20 year period, it's the difference you having literally, uh, you know, $2 million or a million dollars. It is a 50% difference in your portfolio by doing these things inside of your IRA. So anyways, um, I can go on and on for days. And so Chris, I, I want to take a break here because because there's a, you know, I can talk about also how to find some money as well in the 401k business. And if you're looking for funding for your business, that was another subject I was going to go over, but I first wanted to take a breath and, and Chris, you tell me, is there is, is uh, I'll just keep going, but uh, I get excited about what you can do. Uh, and sometimes I skip over some of the fun, basic fundamentals, like what a self-directed IRA is, if you want me to kind of focus on that. But uh, I, I guess I first wanted to get, I get excited because uh, the, my first message is whatever you're doing currently outside of a retirement account, you should be doing some part of that in a retirement account. That alone will change the way you are going to create your, you know, set yourself up for the future for retirement. It is a big deal. And then, and then the, my second point in that first part that I mentioned with you, Chris, is, is if you have an old 401k, don't let it just sit there. You should absolutely contact Chris or my team. And, and we talk about how you can roll that over, not pay taxes on it, and start investing in, in, in things that you might understand that are more tangible, things that you can have a control over. I mean, we all see you know, these different things and mutual fund managers that you know, they, they, they might have a bad day or get a DUI the next day. And all of a sudden, your, your, your stock's gone down 20% just by some stupid decision they made. And so um, I've just learned that no one cares more about my money than I do. Not my financial advisor, not Chris Noggle, um, maybe my kids. They kind of care about it, I feel like. Recently, they've been asking about what happens when I die or when you die. And I'm like, you get nothing, by the way. I'm spending it all. Um, but um, anyways, Chris, I'll stop there um, and, and tell me kind of where you'd like me to go from here. Yeah, I think an explanation of, you know, just self-directed IRAs as a whole would be good. You know, I just want to transition real quick over to, to Stephen. You know, Stephen, you know, how, how we met is he used to work for you doing different events uh, around the country for, for Horizon. And I remember sitting with Stephen at a, a bar. I can't remember. I think it was uh, L.A. or somewhere. And we were just talking about this different stuff we're doing. And he, he brought up a strategy that he uses that I'd really never heard of somebody using at that point. And it's something that Stephen does with self-directed IRAs and his son. Stephen, do you want to take a second and just kind of talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I learned I learned it from Greg, and you know, it's just you know, allowing your children because there's no age restrictions on on IRAs, so you can open up an IRA for for a child, um, and you know, if they have any kind of income or anything like that. So what we do is we've you know hired my son as a as a agent, so that him you know at a very young age and then use them in different ads and things like that and now he has income coming in and then that allows us to open an IRA for him and uh and put that money into his IRA which we can then self-direct for him so he'll have it for the future so it's just another way you know just like we do with the banking policies and open those for kids it's just another avenue for kids to take advantage of these different rules that are out there as far as taxes go so specifically a Roth IRA with him so he has all that tax-free growth for the rest of his life because taxes are just going up and up and up right now i love that i forgot i forgot about that bar maybe that bar that you guys sat at that's why you know steven's not working with you i mean you're not much nicer than me probably yeah steven and i used to work together and 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 i thought i knew everything about banking and then i think uh him and chris were at the bar and understood a whole different level of banking so no i love both you guys and so uh uh all joking aside uh yeah steven's right i mean it's you can you can employ your children um, as long as they have income. They can create a Roth IRA as well. Um, both of my my children, uh, the the two oldest, have have Roth IRAs. Um, but you absolutely can be doing that, and it's and it's you should start young. I wish my parents kind of started me, but although I started, I learned this lesson at twenty three, which I feel like is still pretty young, considering uh, the circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people get confused because they hear the term self-directed IRA and then they, they maybe know about traditional IRAs or they know about rollover IRAs and they know about Roth IRAs, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs. You know, they know all these traditional names that their financial advisors talk to them about. But I know when I first heard about self-directed IRAs, I was a financial advisor at Nylife Securities. And I remember hearing about it and I thought, wow, what a threat. You know, like they can invest in real estate with their IRA money. That doesn't seem even possible. But then I remember asking John, who was the managing partner, and John said, yeah, we can't do those. That would be considered selling away. I just left it right there. I'm like, oh, whew, you know, 
can't do those. But what I later found out is we couldn't do those because we couldn't get paid to do those, which is kind of unique because, you know, Greg, you often talk about how many of the, of the IRA holders in the United States have self-directed IRAs. If I remember back, you know, when I heard that, it was 4%. Think about that, only 4% of all IRAs in this country are self-directed. And I, you know, I, I would think, well, if these are so good, why haven't my advisors told me about this? Why didn't my wealth manager tell me about this? And it comes down to one simple thing. They can't get paid on this, that's it. And I remember when I learned that, I was actually pretty pissed off. That was like one of the first things that pissed me off as an advisor, because I started questioning, if these things are really better for some of our clients, why aren't we talking about those? And then I found out we're not talking about those and it's selling away because the broker dealer can't get paid, which doesn't seem like it's aligned with the client's best interest. So let's just take it back because everybody knows about these traditionals, these Ross, these SEPs, these simples, but then you say self-directed and they think it's a completely different animal. Yeah, so, so going back to the basic fundamentals, self-directed is not like a legal technical term. It's, it's uh, by basically we are licensed. Our company is a, is a licensed firm that allows and holds people's retirement accounts to, and to open a Roth, simple SEP, 401k, um, and anything you can open up with your traditional advisor, you can open up with us. It just is a self-directed account, meaning you can self-direct, put your funds in almost anything, as long as it's not prohibited. And, um, and, and I got a comment because there was one comment that caught my attention, like, why would anyone ever effing do this over a, basically is what I saw in one of the comments over a, a whole life policy. I absolutely do a whole life policy. Um, and this absolutely is a phenomenal thing to do um, for the right people. It is not for everybody. And I want to be very clear about that. Um, and so, so it might not be for the gentleman who said, absolutely, don't ever do it. Uh, it might not be for him. Um, I would definitely say I don't just do the banking and insurance policies. Absolutely not. Doesn't work for me. Um, and and so, but there's a reason for it. And for most of you that have retirement plans already, um, it, it, it does not make sense to cash out um, because it only makes sense, in my opinion, to cash out retirement plan if you don't plan on self-directing. Because if if you're just done with the stock market and you're fed up and you just want to do the banking policy uh, and cash out and do that, it actually does make sense. That makes sense to me. But if you already have a retirement account out there, paying the taxes is not worth it. You can do the same kind of things. You can actually self-direct, move your retire your Roth or your old 401k into a self-direct account and invest in what you know and what you understand and make those big gains, 20, 30, 40%, um, which is super powerful. So I, I, I absolutely do both things. And there is a place for it for certain individuals and not, and not for everybody. So- I, I did want to. Uh, if I could just comment on that, because I was just catching up on on these comments uh, that Ch you know I think Chase said that stuff, and and I understand one thing was weird. He said, you know, why why would anyone do this when the government can steal people's retirement funds? I'm not quite sure how that would be possible in a self directed custodian. They'd have to, I guess, you know, the government can really do anything they want. You know, if you piss them off enough or you do something illegal, they can freeze your assets. Maybe not so much the whole life assets, but believe me, if they tried hard enough, they can. So I guess that's kind of doomsday thoughts, but but hey, I'll give you that. And one thing I'll, I'll say to, to uh, well, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them that. There, you, you can, the government can't just come in and take your real estate. If your IRA buys a piece of real estate, it's it's not just going to come in and take the real estate, um, or the or or any you know the government can change the rules, and and but the government, I mean, that's kind of a doomsday situation for any kind of case scenario. So in a self-directed IRA. Um, you know, there is, there is certain assets that you can and cannot invest in, but I can also tell you from all the accounts that we've held over the, you know, 18 years I've owned a trust company, um, you know, there's, there's been very few, I can count them on one hand of owner accounts that have been ever audited by the IRS, um, and, and, and looked at, um, now they're looked at if you were trying to steal or not pay any taxes at all, that definitely happens. But if you were to tell me, Hey, Greg, um, if you follow these rules that the IRS has put, put, uh, has put together since in 1974 for you to follow, these are, these are, these are 40 year old rules. And if you follow those rules that you have one in a hundred chance of actually having any issues or, or better said, if you go to a casino and you're going to win 99 out of a hundred rolls, I'm going to, I'm going to keep betting. And I might hit that one because I might've made a mistake or whatnot, but those are good odds. I like that. You know, the, the only thing I would say too is, you know, when people are looking at, you know, which one of these do I do? I mean, 
it's really a component of doing both. That's why it's be your own bank, BYOB. It applies to both. One is qualified, one is non-qualified. Today we're mostly talking about qualified retirement funds. I'll give you an example. You know, I worked for Nylife Securities, a big broker dealer, and I, I was there for 14 years before I moved on to independent. When I left that company, of course I had a 401k there and I was contributing to it. So when I left, I had, I had to move those funds over. I moved them over to the new BD, the broker dealer and RIA that I was working for, but later I ended up moving them to a self-directed IRA. If I were to have taken those funds out of that IRA and put them into a whole life, I'd pay taxes and penalties, which means I would probably lose 40 to 45% of that. That's just not, to me, I know some people would argue that, oh, just rip the bandit off, but to me, that's just not a smart move. The government doesn't manage our money well, why give them more up front? Like, I'd, I'd like to pay them over time, as long of a period of time as I can. So when you're thinking about these, the BYOB, the, all the stuff we're talking about, you're gonna have two buckets. Most people have retirement funds and they have non-qualified funds like savings, checking, money markets. So you're always gonna have two. So we're really just covering the one side, which is the qualified side. And uh, it, yes. it, 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 so I'm gonna interrupt, sorry, one other thing on that. I, I think, uh, and I don't wanna spend too much time on this, but I get excited about it sometimes, different subjects. So the, the, the best way to not worry about really the government and the future of taxes is having a Roth account. So um, sure, they can change those rules, but typically you get grandfathered into things. And so they did, actually. They changed the Roth rules this last year, actually. They, they made a new rule that you can only make $10 million per year in your Roth. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Um, that was trying to avoid because some other people were making uh, a lot more than $10 million a year in, in diverting and avoiding all taxes. So they can change some rules, but but that seems like a pretty reasonable change they made recently this last year. So um, I like the Roth um, because I can make as much possible money inside of there, well, up to $10 million um, in the Roth. Um, and, and when I pull it out, not pay taxes. And if you're doing your self-directing in a traditional account, which also still works, and there's reasons why you might want to do that, um, but the difference is, is, is you know, when you pull it out, you got to pay the taxes. And as we all know, the government <laughs> taxes are going up. When they keep printing money, there's going to be more taxes. And so that, that there is some, you know, there's some issues with traditional and SEP um, and traditional 401ks as well. Um, I think you might have, you were going to maybe ask Stephen, but the one other subject when you want to go back to it is the amount of IRAs and 401ks out there and how to borrow money. But uh, before we go there, were you going to ask Stephen something? I was just going to say, you know, we kind of like to hit some of the questions as we go, and we've got some, well, quite a few of them piling up. So do you mind if we just knock out three or four questions that came in on Q&A? And Stephen, would you mind just reading some of those off? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's some good ones. So I wanted to, instead of typing the answers, I figured we could just answer them out loud. So uh, they're asking, do you need a certain license to help people with self-directed IRA accounts? Uh, good, good question. Uh, no, um, not, you, you don't need a license to do that. Where, where you would potentially need a license is if you're going to um, have them invest in a investment with you. Uh, teaching and educating, in fact, um, the long answer to this question starts even is, is I was a real estate investor when I was 23 years old and I couldn't find any money. And, and so banks wouldn't lend me. And so, so what I learned was this concept we're talking about right now. And so I found individuals that wanted to fund my real estate deals with their IRA. And so I actually became an IRA expert. <laughs> I didn't work for a trust company. Uh, I wasn't licensed with a trust company. I didn't get paid by a trust company, but I had a relationship with a company like mine now that I have now. And I went out and said, hey, look, you want to lend me money and, and, or partner with me on my next deal? Roll your IRA. Uh, to a trust company, and obviously mine's Horizon Trust, roll it there, get your money there, and then your IRA can fund or partner with me. Um, so you don't need a license to do that. The only potential licenses typically that you might need is if you're out there soliciting dollars, you know, for an investment fund or a Reg D offering or some kind of registration uh, or some kind of investment kind of fund. Um, that's when, but, that, but investment licensing is totally different. Um, you referring over um, clients to a trust company like ours, there's no license needed. And that's how I actually built um, my real estate portfolio when I was 23 years old. Uh, no, awesome answer, Greg. I mean, it's, it's, it's spot on. And, you know, if you're looking for a company to refer to, I'm sure Greg would love, uh, love the business. So reach out to them afterwards and, and they'll take great care of your clients or uh, your referrals. So Colleen was just asking, is it worth depositing after tax dollars into her, her Roth self-directed IRA each year? Well, is the, the question, is it worth is it worth it? 
Is it worth deposit? I guess annual contributions into the the Roth IRA. Uh, so, I still understand the question. I, I would certainly say if you've got a Roth IRA, you should. If you know, why wouldn't you contribute to it? I guess you'd have to weigh out whether it's a you know worth putting it into the Roth or, or putting it into the banking systems because it is after tax dollars. But the Roth IRA has some really unique things. I think. Um, one thing you could talk about, Greg, is you know how you've used Roths in the wholesale capacity and how that works and how you've taught that. I think that's a perfect example of why a Roth would supersede and be a better place to have money than the private banking system for that particular use. I recommend every single person have, uh, just like you probably recommend everyone to have the infant banking policy. I have one as well. I recommend it as well to everybody. Yeah, I use it for different things. Uh, same thing with this is it, even if you just set up a Roth IRA, and let's say you put five or six thousand dollars in there, and that's all you ever do, one time. I don't recommend that. I recommend you probably putting a little bit more in every year. But if you just did it one time, and that five thousand dollars went in there, and you actually in, on your on a wholesale deal, again, I don't want to get too detailed, in, but this is the example you want me to ask or share, Chris, is a wholesale. Typically, when I would wholesale a deal, my LLC would put a piece of real estate under contract, a title. And then I would then wholesale it, sell it to somebody else, that contract that they would take over and close. That's wholesaling. Well, and they would typically pay me a fee. I get, a, I find a great deal, put under contract for $5,000 and personally out of my LLC. And then when they buy or transfer over that, um, that, that contract over to the buyer, they give me a fee for $20,000. Um, so that $20,000 goes right back into my Roth. I just turned my $5,000 Roth into a $25,000 Roth in 30 days and I don't pay taxes on it. And so um, that's, what's powerful about doing it inside of a Roth. And so, so if you just did that one time per year, and then let your, let's say now your $20,000 or $25,000 sits in your account and you do nothing for a year, it's okay. You just made a 400% rate of return on your money. You can chill and wait for the next great deal to come up the following year. And now you have $25,000 so you can do one, two, or three new deals. And so I just recommend doing a couple deals every single year, one or two or three deals in your IRA. Um, you could do a wholesale or a partnership deal. Uh, and then all those gains go back into, um, uh, into your IRA. And so um, that's, that's kind of been, uh, you know, that is a, a, a way of making money in your, in your IRA and why it would make sense to do it inside of your Roth IRA. Um, and it's very, very simple. Um, the other thing that we do for those, again, um, going back to almost one of those first questions I was trying to uh, respond to, um, for everyone it's different. So some of you that are listening to this, um, might be in there, you know, a little bit older and a and little bit behind on saving. And they're trying to figure out a way to actually start their savings and, and kind of beef it up more. There's actually a, a way if you have an LLC or a business to start a 401k, which we, we help you do. And inside of that 401k, create a Roth account and you can contribute up to $60,000. So when our clients set up that kind of account, so they're trying to do some catch up and put some money into there. Um, uh, we, we actually, we include the LLC, we, we, we give you an LLC, we get you a 401k, and we get you a Roth account, and you can start investing and, and really contribute a lot of money, up to $60,000. Those accounts are unique, so it's actually one that I have, and Chris, you might have one of those as well yeah. with us, and um, those accounts you're able to contribute a lot more, and there's different rules. For some of you that might make too much money, if you just open up a traditional Roth IRA, uh, you're not able to actually, if you make too much money, uh, if you do it with inside of a 401k, uh, it does not matter how much money you make. And so there's, there's certain rules. And so that's why what we recommend always is, Hey, what, you know, some, a lot of people ask, well, what kind of account is right for me to actually take advantage of these tax savings kind of opportunities that have been around again, since the seventies, most of you have, most of you either haven't known probably about, uh, um, uh, it's, we do a call, we do a consultation, my team, I think even Chris's team all is very versed on this. I know Steven for sure is and Chris, and we kind of find out what your goal is. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? And then we can help you decide what's the right type of retirement account that you qualify for 
that you can get opened and you can start self-directing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the we, big things, go ahead, Stephen, go ahead. I was just saying, we call it, you know, we talk about a lot in like the money school presentations and stuff, and we call it consistent, predictable income for the rest of your life. And, you know, depending on how you initially fund that, let's get those funds and then create that consistent income coming in. Cause when you're playing the stocks, I mean, again, you know, you, you might get 20% one year, but then you're negative 10% the next year. And then who knows if we enter a recession here, what's going to happen. But when we do these different types of self-directed investments, we can control exactly what that looks like. So we'll know exactly where we are today and exactly where we'll be in 10 years from now, because we know exactly what these investments are going to do for us and we can control every aspect of it. Absolutely. And Stephen, in the chat, if you want to just t uh, put in there the way that people can contact us, I think, you know, you could put the, uh, you know, just the link in there. And then, you know, a lot of people were asking, you know, how would they set up a call to discuss this, whether it would make sense for them to do the rollover. I think one of the things that's really important that, you know, we've done is, you know, we started working with you, Greg, a long time ago, and we were, you know, sending tons of people over for self-directed IRAs. But one of the things that became evident for us is, is a lot of people would move money into the self-directed IRAs. And once the money got there, they're like, okay, now what? They didn't know what the next step was. They didn't have a platform that allowed them to then put that money to work. I mean, if they were real estate investors, maybe they did, but if they weren't, that next step was, was foreign to them because before that, all they did is they would just pick whatever mutual funds, whether they knew what they were investing in or not, but they, they kind of understood, all right, I'll pick a bunch of funds or I'll put it in an index fund. Now it's in a self-directed IRA and the universe is theirs. They can invest in everything from gold, silver, real estate. They can do private lending. They can invest in private funds. I mean, crypto, now all of a sudden everything's available to them and now they're just confused because it's, it's just, you know, it's too much. So what we did is we really just worked on creating a team, called it the money movement team. And that team helps, you know, any client basically get to that next step. What is it that the client knows, likes and understands? What is it that they want to do? And then the money movement team will help put that plan of action. And then what we also did is we put platforms in place to allow people access. You know, I'll just show you one really quick. Uh, this is it right here, Private Money Club. I mean, this is launching to the public in October. Right now it's in beta. Anyone that's on these webinars can take part of the beta. It's $997 a year for the membership, but it's literally, it's very simple to understand what Private Money Club is. There's two types of people out there. There's people that have money, they want to make more money. So a bunch of you on here and in the chat, anybody that has money that wants to make money, put I in the chat. Let's just stand up and be counted, okay? There's a ton of you that have money, whether it's in a self-directed IRA in your private banking policies or just sitting in a bank account and that money needs to go to work for you. So you want to make more on that, okay? Secondarily, the other side would be people that need money to make money. I'll use myself as an example. When I was a real estate investor doing lots of flips, I needed lots of money. Greg lent me a lot of money, so did Mike and many other people. I needed money to make money because the money I made was when I sold the flip, wholesaled the contract, or did the rental. But without money, that couldn't happen. So I think one of the big problems that we are always trying to solve is, okay, we got people that have money and we got people that need money, but how do you bring those people together? Okay, RIAs are a good way. If you got one in your neighborhood, maybe you go to masterminds and you meet a couple of people, but that's not consistent enough. So we needed to create a dating site. Yeah, I used to use eHarmony back when I was a pro snowboarder. We're not gonna go into that detail, but like it was a great function. <laughs> if I was gonna be in Colorado and I was alone, like, hey, eHarmony was a great way for me to connect with people that I wouldn't normally know. It was a community. That community never existed for money. Private Money Club is the dating site for money. It connects people that have money that want to make money with people that need money to make money in one cohesive process, and it does it with what you're looking at. So that's all we did is we just paired together these different problem-solving tools so that people had mechanisms and ways to move their money to make consistent, predictable income. And that is the most beautiful thing. My wife and I, I mean, if you guys can see what I'm holding here, this is just an old binder, probably from 1970s. In this, these are all notes, okay? There's a lot of them. I've been doing this for a little while. All these are notes that me and my wife have lent on. Every one of these notes in here has predict produced a consistent, predictable income. Every month, money shows up. If it's our self-directed IRAs, it shows up in our account. If it's not our IRAs and it's our banking policies, it shows up in the, in the mail every month. You just walk out to the mailbox and that money's there like this. That doesn't happen with stocks. One day you're looking at it, you're like, woo, yes, I'm rich. The next day you're looking at it, like, son of a bitch. You know, it's just, there's no consistent, predictable income when it comes to the markets. But in this world, when you're in control of your money, there is. So just giving you a couple examples on these different things. I mean, there's really no one, there's two different ways to do it, qualified, non-qualified, but really you need to connect the dots 
and have the community, and that's what we've done. We've created the community, the coaching, and the process for people to make that money work for them. Yeah, you, you've done a great job with that. I got to do one fact check. You said no since the 70s, dude. You're not that old. I know you got some great Oh, no, notebook, notebook. Book. This notebook, oh, okay. look at this thing, okay. man. That's, that's yeah, definitely yeah. from 19... Right. It's even rusty. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> no, not the notes, the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, well, look, I, I want to say something else, too. This is, this is not for everyone. There is a reason why only 4% of Americans self-direct. For, for those of you that um, do not have a clue on where you want to put your money, if you were to self-direct, um, then you shouldn't self-direct. Um, if, if you think you have some ideas and you want to invest in, in, like we keep talking about real estate, gold, cryptocurrencies, different businesses, um, then this could be the right fit for you. I mean, there's a reason that it's not only because your financial advisor hasn't told you about it. And no offense against them, because I've got you know one that does some some of my market stuff as well. There's great ones out there, but the, the other reason why is it's not for everybody. And so we're looking for those that are you know typically our our kind of client. We have thousands and thousands of clients that are entrepreneurs. These guys uh, typically are clients, guys and gals that are looking to avoid paying taxes, are building their business, trying to catch up maybe because they they started saving too late in the game. And so these are our clients that are taking more action, that are looking, investing and in, 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 in making decisions on their investments that typically only takes 30 or 45 minutes a month on, which is more than the rest of the world or at least the rest of the country. And so so that's that's who we're looking to work with. You know, we're not looking for typically people that just want to you know, roll over their account. They don't know where they're going to put it at all. Um, and, and, and I'll say one thing actually uh, about that is some people like I know I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to wait till I find the investment and then I'm going to do it. That's absolutely the wrong way of doing it. If you know you want to self-direct and take action and actually start contributing and being ready for the next opportunity, you should open up your account, transfer over your funds, wherever they may be, over into your self-direct. If you have an old 401k, get it transferred over. If you have an IRA, you can do a portion of it as well. You don't have to move the whole thing over. You can test this out, move over $50,000 or $25,000, get it set up. Even if it sits there for two or three or four months and does nothing, that's okay. You are ready for that opportunity because when the opportunity comes like that wholesale deal or that deal I just did last month, I actually had my money sitting for about four and a half months doing nothing. Thankfully it wasn't in the market. Those these last four and a half months <laughs> or it would have been doing something. It would have been going down. Um, that being said, it was in my self to that I was just waiting for the deal. And then it came up. If you, if I just do one deal a year, I'm beating the market. I'm getting double digit returns. Now, if I can able to do two or three, now maybe I can hit actually 100% rate of return or even 50%. But that's not my expectation. I'm just trying to get double digit returns in the 10 to 20% rate of returns in my IRA, which beats the market. But it so happens to be that I'm making more than that on my IRA typically. And so, again, it's not for everyone. It's for those that actually want to take action and avoid paying taxes on those gains. I think you said something that's key there, and that is, you know, sometimes you got to have patience to really get that opportunity you've been waiting for. A lot of people just don't have the patience. They jump into things, and it ends up being a bad move for them because they weren't willing to just wait for the right opportunity for that investment that they, they know, like, and understand. I always say that. Protect your wealth, the third law of wealth. You know, don't invest in things you don't understand. Invest in things you like and things that you understand. And when you do that, your chance of making money are significantly greater than just blindly going into things. Like, I mean, just look back at the Reddit thing. You know, how many people jumped on, you know, GameStop and AMC? I mean, what about the, the, the single mother, you know, that took her, her daughter or son's college fund? This is a true story. It was on CNBC. Took their daughter or son's college fund and put it all into AMC because they thought it was going to go to the moon. How'd they, how do they feel now? Their kids aren't going to college on that fund anymore because the fund is pretty much gone. Like That's scary, but that's the stuff people do, and that's what we're trying to get people away from. And I love that you mentioned that. Just take your time and wait. You're not missing anything by waiting a few months for the right opportunity because when that one comes, like Greg said, double-digit returns, listen, like people wish they made double-digit returns right now. <laughs> They're not. Uh, Steven, do you want to hit some of these? These are some of the best questions, Greg, that I've ever seen. They're really good. Let's get these because these are unbelievable. Okay, so this is one of my favorites by Teresa. She said, my 401k was rolled over to a self-directed at Fidelity, but if I use 70000 for a house, wouldn't I still be hit with a 20% penalty tax? <laughs> well, uh, the quick answer is uh, it, it, these, these financial 
um, companies, brokers, houses uh, cre have created something called a self-directed account. Um, and they typically don't actually give you that flexibility at all. Um, they say that it's self-directed, but then they give you kind of your restraints to what you can and cannot do. Um, uh, I am 95% sure that Fidelity will not allow you to then buy that rental property uh, inside of your self-directed Fidelity account, which is why you need a custodian like ours. And again, it, it can be one of my competitors. I'm, I just, I'm, I'm, my, my point is I want you to educate you, but um, we're really good at the real estate world. And so if you want to buy a real estate asset with your retirement account, there is no tax penalty. What you would do is roll over the portion of your funds from your Fidelity account to a, a self-directed account with our custodian that allows you to actually buy that investment opportunity. And when you transfer it over, you don't pay any taxes. And then when that investment, your self-directed IRA, buys that real estate, any proceeds or profits that come back to retirement account, you pay no taxes on either. If it's inside of a traditional IRA account, you'll eventually pay taxes on anything you take out, just like you would right now at Fidelity. Um, if it's inside of a Roth, then obviously all those gains you'll take out at the right age and not pay taxes at all on any of it. Does that answer your question? I don't right. Yeah, I like, I like it, man. It's, um, they get tricky. You know, They're trying to uh, draw people in and tell them they're getting and it's just Tricky, tricky, tricky. All right. So what's the max per year for your child? Can grandparents do one also for the same child, like double dipping? Uh, you can't double dip. Um, the, the max for the child is they can't, they can't contribute um, to the Roth more money than they make. For example, if your, your child makes $5,000, you can't contribute $6,000 to the Roth IRA. So you have to, they have to have enough earned income to contribute to their retirement account and they cannot double dip the max 6,500 or 5,500 um, depending on ages um, is the max per person period. Yeah. And even if you have three IRAs, you could do 2000 in each one to add up to the 6,000, but it's a, it's a per individual. Uh, that number is correct. That's right. That's correct. All right. So you may cover this, but how much uh, needs to be in a Roth IRA for it to make financial sense to convert to a self-directed for private money. In other words, if my kids' IRAs are less than 20,000 or 10,000. Is there a way for them to make more money, private money lending than they're making in a mutual fund? Again, I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor and I, and I don't give specifics on which investments to go into, but the, the, the quick answer is yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I always say if you can have at least 5,000 minimum in, in a self-directed. So in, in, in this case, you could roll over the, your, your children's accounts into a self-directed account with us. Once it arrives there, um, those accounts, let me give you an example. Let's say that uh, you want to invest in a loan, like what Chris, uh, what Nagel was talking about. Uh, let's say that loan is a hundred thousand dollar loan that you're going to lend. Um, um, and if if you if you lend that money at a hundred thousand dollars, you could have four or five individuals all put up your son, daughter. They all can actually put up ten thousand dollars from their IRA account and direct and fund that hundred thousand dollar loan. So they all can make a good return. Well, uh, what are your thoughts of putting uh, those four hundred one k in a fixed indexed annuity? Maybe that's better for Chris. You want me to yeah, it might be better for Chris. Yeah, it's all yeah, you. So I know a lot about fixed indexed annuities. Uh, there was something that we did a lot of, you know, when we were when I was an advisor. Uh, they're a good tool. Uh, I don't really do them anymore now that I know what I know and know how to make money work for me using the self-directed IRA. There's no reason I would ever do that. The problems you're going to have with the indexed annuities: number one, you're going to have limited liquidity. The second the money hits that annuity, you're going to have a surrender period. The minimum amount of time I've ever seen is five years. They might have a couple now that are three years, but five years. So if you put the money in, you're going to earn a fixed interest or, or indexed, you know, whatever one it is, you know, fixed indexed annuity is what they're calling them. You're going to earn that return. But what if you could earn 12 percent? Like my, my self-directed IRAs, like I don't make less than 12 percent, period. I lend that money out through private money club and I make 12 percent flat. And you're never going to get that in an indexed annuity. Plus, you're going to give up a control, okay? So that you're not going to have control of that money. It's just going to sit there and grow. And if it, and right now, the indexed annuities do not keep pace with inflation. So essentially, you're you're walking backwards in the indexed annuities right now. Um, in the future, that might be different. But again, I just am all about taking control of my money, not giving up control. Doing them, the surrenders, and everything you're going to do inside the annuity wrapper, 
you don't have any control and you can't do any of the stuff we're talking about. So I would sh shy you away from it unless there's a very specific reason why you're doing that. Uh, advisors love them. We used to love them because they're high commission. Uh, put it right out in the open. I mean, that's why you hear about them. That's why they're sold. Just like term insurance, the reason you hear so much about term insurance is the most profitable life insurance product for insurance companies. So it makes, it makes all sense in the world why that's all you ever hear about. So same thing with indexed annuities. Hopefully that helps. Can you roll uh, over a 401k into a self-directed IRA? Just want to talk yeah. about rollovers? Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. So that only applies for if it's a 401k with your previous employer. So when I said earlier that 40% of Americans have changed jobs in the last three years, um, uh, um, if it's a previous employer, you can roll it over. Uh, if it, you are currently employed there and making contributions there, uh, you cannot roll over that 401k. It would stay there. Um, and, and, and one thing we didn't talk too much about um, that I, I should bring up is if you're looking for funding, this is a good opportunity for you to talk to individuals because people are fed up with the stock market. People are just done. And so if you're looking for funding for your business or for real estate or for something, uh, and you know someone that has an old 401k that potentially wants to lend you money, they can lend it from their, um, for, you know, they'd have to roll over their IRA or 401k into a self directed account. And then from there, they could lend you the money. Okay. Could, can you have a, a, both a 401k and a self-directed IRA? Um, no, tip, well, typically not. Uh, it, it just depends. I need to know uh, how much they're contributing to their 401k. This would be a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, if they already have a pre-existing um, IRA, um, IRA somewhere else, how much they're contributing. So uh, we could do a one-on-one -on -one consultation and talk about that. Uh, one other thing too, I really want to talk about is, you know, we, we keep talking about real estate and lending, but, you know, given that the markets are starting to deteriorate and will continue to do that, you know, a lot of people are talking gold, precious metals. So with a self-directed IRA, let's just talk about some of the the options people have. And a lot of people think when they go to the self-directed, they can't invest in stocks or the normal stuff, which, so can we just hit like some of the things people can really do with a self-directed and how vast it is, especially in tune with, you know, actual physical metals. I, I said real estate too much, so I'll stop on that. Probably about 60% of our clients invest in some kind of real estate, right? It's flipping or wholesaling or lending or funds, et cetera. Uh, then there's a lot of other alternatives. And uh, a big segment is in businesses. People like to lend or partner in businesses with their retirement account. When I say partner, they will be a member, 5% or 10% member owner of a business. Uh, gold, you can buy precious metals. Uh, I think that's been the comment I saw a couple of people ask about. You absolutely can buy them. You can't hold them. So there's actually a depository that we typically use and recommend that's in uh, Delaware that your IRA will purchase them and then you'll get a certificate and you'll get you know proof and it will be held somewhere else. You can't literally hold on to the gold if your IRA owns it. Um, and so uh, we have a lot of people that, especially lately, are, are buying a lot more um, um, uh, they're buying a lot more um, precious metals. And then obviously cryptocurrencies, Bitcoins, et cetera. Um, so that, that also is an option. And um, that's, that's typically what I see. You can't, you can't buy insurance policies. Uh, you can't buy collectibles, antiques. Um, you can't also, you can't invest in your own personal home. If you're living there or it's a vacation home, something that you're using, you cannot use that. That would be a tax. Um, complication and penalty. So that, those are typically the things that uh, you can invest in using a self-directed IRA. One thing I think that's important to bring up, every guru under the sun, you know, was on TikTok talking about crypto and now crypto, I'm just looking now, Bitcoin is at 20,218 as of right now. That means that all the people that bought at 65 probably are either freaking out or have already liquidated their, their Bitcoin and Ethereum because it's gone down. So as Warren Buffett says, when others are fearful, be greedy. With your self-directed IRA, you could be taking advantage of buying Bitcoin or Ethereum if that's your flavor, if that's something you like. I mean, at 20,000, is there room to go down? Yeah, I think the ultimate floor is 10 to 14,000, and that's probably where it could head when things deteriorate. But like, just imagine having your money in your IRA being able to buy these assets as they go down and down and down. I mean, you can't do that with Fidelity, Vanguard. You can't do that with your Prudential. You definitely can't do that with your indexed annuity or any annuity for that matter. So like these things are, are massively important. 
whether you're a Bitcoin or Ethereum or crypto person or not, this gives you the opportunity to invest in that or precious metals or real estate or stocks if you want or ETFs if you want. I mean, anything. That's the whole idea. You're in control. You don't have Fidelity saying, hey, with your account, you can only invest in this. It, you know, I have a TD Ameritrade account where some of my, my money sits for you know, my taxes. That's what I use. But that money, I can only buy traditional financial investments, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, stocks. I can't do any of the fun stuff I can do with my self-directed accounts. It's, it's a huge difference. And if I were to compare the two, even in the last, you know, just remember, we've been in the longest bull run history. So if I looked at my stock portfolio and I compared it to my Horizon Trust self-directed IRA, my self-directed IRA has grown leaps and bounds over my TD accounts because it's been consistent, predictable income. And that's what it comes down to. What Jill said, I assume you can buy rare earth metals as well, correct? Rare earth metals. Um, I have to check. There's, there's, certain, well, there's certain precious metals that you can and cannot buy. So I have to look at our list. I'm not an expert of that, um, on, but my office is, and they've got a list on what's acceptable and what's not. Easy, easy thing to find out. And Greg, I think that's another thing to really kind of touch on real quick is, you know, when people get into accounts, one thing I love about TD Ameritrade, if we're going to go traditional, is their service. When you call, you get somebody on the phone. Like I just, I just called them today for a stupid thing. I used to be an advisor, so I had restrictions when I was an advisor. They need to remove it. Getting that done with most places is a nightmare. Customer service is dead these days, but TD was pretty good. And when I need help with Horizon, I call and I get somebody on the phone, a, a human being on the phone, not a call sender, center and, you know, in the Philippines, no, no disrespect, but like I get somebody on the phone that knows what to do and how to get the stuff done. So how have you really, you know, because I know you've made some major changes with Horizon and almost all of them focused around service, service, service. Why did you go to the, that direction? And can you just talk a little bit about that? I got into this. I got in the trust company business uh, really 15 years ago uh, because I, I was in the real estate world raising money and referring clients to trust companies. And these trust companies, the service was terrible. And so I was like, how do I fix this? And I started my own trust company. That's why I got into it. So um, now I've been doing it long enough. It is my core business. And I, I love talking about it. Um, but uh, you know, we are a boutique firm. You, you can always reach me. You can reach my staff. Uh, your, your experience with our company is very important. We hear you. And so last year we actually, we, I, I was honest. People said, man, I, the wait times were tough. And I, I reacted to that. We hired more people, got more training in, um, continue to educate our staff. Um, but we're a boutique firm. We're here. We, we want to move fast. And we want to be efficient and, and our competitors are slow. Uh, I can say it. I, they're, they're slow. <laughs> we beat them on speed and we beat them on service. And if we don't know the answer, we find it out. And so that's, that's, that's who we are. And we're looking for clients that are actually wanting to take action in their accounts. And, you know, we don't, we don't do any, you know, big, you know, you know, call sales floor stuff where we're trying to blitz you. And if you're interested in working with us and it's a right fit for us as well, then we'll open up the account. This is kind of crazy. I didn't read the, the comments here, but Jim came in and said, not a question, but a shout out. And this is before I said what I said. He said, just rolled over an old 401k to Horizon and Greg's staff has been very helpful, very easy process. So that's a cool shout out. I ah, thanks, man. Thanks for the shout out. I appreciate that, Jim. Thank you for uh, that. That's important. I'll share with the team because we really strive for that. Um, and look, and when we fail at it, I want to know. Um, but speed is important to us, I'd say, in, in service. And so um, we continue to work on that. So one of the things, too, that uh, you know, I think is really important is going forward, folks, there's going to be a lot of changes to the economy. The markets will continue probably to sell off and you know, have more hardships. But in, do, in all of that, if you remember any other downward pattern, while this happens, people will get laid off. Companies are going to downsize. You're already hearing it. I mean, Google, all the FANG stocks, right? The, the almighty FANGs, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, all those companies, they're downsizing. Okay, they're, they're shutting off some of the staff that they put on when things were good because they know things aren't going to be so good. Now, I'm not saying any of you are those people being downsized, but you always have to think that, could I be next? You hear these stories all the time. You know, they're, they're doing big layoffs and the person's like, Phew, I haven't been let go yet, but you might be the next person. And when you get laid off, you're going to have some decisions to make, some pivots to make, some, some really important things. Well, the one thing 
when somebody gets laid off, they lose their job, they change their job like 40% of the Americans did in the last, what, two years, I think you said, Greg? In doing that, mm -hmm. when you pack up your desk, you know how it works. We've all done this, right? You come in, it's your last day, you're putting all the pictures of your family, you're taking the swing line stapler, everything that's your belongings, you put it into a box or a bag and you walk out the door. Last time you're ever gonna go there. Sometimes you're pissed, sometimes you're happy. The one thing I'll never understand is when people walk out and they took everything, including that red swing line stapler, why did they leave their money? They literally leave their money at the old company that they're leaving. And they, do, they don't think there's a problem with that. And they, sometimes they say, well, I don't know what to do with it. So a lot of times they'll roll it over to the new 401k at their new company. I think that's a massive mistake. You don't get any benefit from rolling your old 401k to your new 401k. Sure, maybe it's the path of least resistance, but it's not like they're giving you a match in this money. It's not like they make it easy. Actually, they make it kind of difficult in most cases to do that. So I just don't understand why people have that, that sentiment that they leave they take all their things, but they leave their most, one of their most important assets, and it's their money. Greg, have you ever given any thought to that? <laughs> Almost everyone I, I meet with that at these events are typically entrepreneurs. They're, they're, they're new um, uh, or old entrepreneurs. And so what you're talking about is really about people taking action and not letting their money to sit idle. So it's happening all around us. When I say all around us, it's in our circles. And so... Uh, typical America, right? The the ninety percent or more um, are just doing the same old thing they've always been doing, and that's why they're going to get the same kind of results. And so, there, there's just there's so many rules and opportunities that the government has put in place. I mean, I mean, look look at this example. Uh, do you know that you can buy a plane for and buy and and and, and put twenty percent down and borrow eighty percent, but the whole hundred percent is a write-off against any income you earned. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, who do you think created that rule? Do you think, do you think, I mean, do you think that is for the common person? The wealthy have taken advantage and created rules that the IRS has that we need to know about and take advantage of. So, so there's so many opportunities. I mean, that, this is, this is another one of them in the seventies when this was created. Um, there's a lot of legislators, uh, legislative government and, uh, officials and, and, and people that have taken advantage of these rules and done very creative things. Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm going to hit Tom's question in the chat real quick. He said he still works for his employer. He went to his plan administrator and said, you know, hey, can I do anything with this 403B? So he works for a nonprofit. Uh, and they said, no, while you're employed, you cannot move your current 401k, 403B or retirement account. And that, that's going to always be the case. There's only one exception. If you're over 50 years old, and you go to your administrator, you can ask them this, do I qualify for an in-service, non-hardship withdrawal or rollover? And if they say yes, many companies are doing this and allowing this now because they don't want the liability. They're allowing employees that are still actively engaged in the company, still actively contributing to the retirement. They allow them to move all or a portion of their current retirement account under what they call an in-service, meaning I still work there, non-hardship, meaning you don't have a hardship, rollover. And if that's allowed in your company, then yes, you, you can maintain, continue working there and roll over your 401k or whatever retirement account to a self-directed IRA. That's usually the only way to do it. Otherwise, pack your bags and leave the company, then you can take the money with you as well. Uh, so Tom, I, hopefully that helps, but yeah, that's, that's a problem. But if you're down 17%, just look at your current allocation, look at where your money's sitting and maybe make some changes there. Uh, one thing I want to point out too, and Greg, you're going to be here July 30th and the 31st. Okay. It's about a little, little over a month from today. We're doing a live event and we're doing it right here at our facilities. We rented out a, a TV station, like a TV studio. It's kind of like David Letterman stadium seating. There's only room for a hundred people. And then we're going to have our, our speakers, uh, doing an unbelievable presentation, but here's, you all should really join us. Okay. I know you're like, well, why do I want to, want to go to Buffalo? It's beautiful here. You don't want to be in Las Vegas or Arizona right now. Trust me, Buffalo, spectacular this time of the year. I've had guests from out of town come in and they've both been like, holy cow, I didn't know Buffalo was so beautiful. I'm like, yeah, don't come here in February, but if you come here in July, it's absolutely stunning. So get, get a ticket. I'll have Steven put the link up and join us. Greg will be here. Stephen will be here. We'll have a whole bunch of other speakers and you're gonna learn one of three things. Number one, in these hard times that are coming, you're gonna learn how to preserve and protect your money. 
I don't care if it's money you already have in your 401k. I don't care if it's new money. I don't care if it's money that's just sitting there you don't know what to do with. You're gonna learn how to preserve and protect that money. That is critical. That is worth coming to the event right for that. Secondarily, you're gonna learn how to grow that money using investments that are much safer than traditional investments and absolutely non-correlated, non-connected to the stock market. You're gonna learn how to grow that money consistently and pre predictably without any ups and downs of the markets, okay? That's number two thing you're gonna learn. And number three thing you're gonna learn, and this is vital, is you're gonna learn how to be your own bank. And you're gonna learn the specifics, the tactical ways you can do this. So just on the first one, preserving and protecting wealth is worth you making this trip. Okay, absolutely worth it. A lot of people come up with excuses. Oh, I can't, I can't make it in July. Well, you can come virtually, okay? You can come in person or you can come virtually. And also there's about 15 seats left. We are doing a VIP section in a VIP part. That's gonna basically allow you to come a day early, okay? So July 29th, the day after my birthday, and you're gonna be able to spend an entire evening with myself, the speakers, and the team at a baseball game, sitting in a suite that is 1950s themed. It's gonna be badass. So that's what you're gonna get, and then lunch and a couple other things. So there's only 15 seats left for the VIP, and there, there's the stadium right there. We're gonna watch the fireworks. We're gonna take a limo bus there. I mean, it's a whole, whole to do. So grab your VIP tickets or your general admission tickets and join us, because we're not doing a ton of seats. This isn't one of those events where there's gonna be thousands of people. There's gonna be 100 people, period. And this is the right time, the right place for what's going on. So if you care about your money, come join us live. I and mean, we can only get so much done virtually on these webinars, but when you come live, spend some time with us, rub shoulders, and we'll give you our time and we'll, we'll get you where you need to be. So we'll put that link up if you guys wanna join us and Greg will be there. Greg, is there anything that you want to talk about kind of at the tail end? You know, I, I know you've given us you know, a little over an hour. Um, is there anything that you think is important for this audience to hear? Um, look, I, I, I've got to run right now too. I, I would just say that if you, if you just do the simple thing, if you, in fact, uh, htccalculator.com, and we've talked about this before, Chris, if you want to truly understand the numbers of why this is important and how this works, go there, plug in some numbers, plug in what you, you know, start saving now or starting with $10,000 and see what compounding, not paying taxes in your Roth account will do. And, and mess around with that interest rate, hccalculator.com and put in, oh, if I make 8% in my Roth account, or if I make 12%, what is the difference over 10 or 15 or 20 years? It is life changing. And so I'll just end by saying, you know, by, by creating true wealth and large accounts and not paying taxes, is a peace of mind and it's really about sleeping good at night and it took me to, it took me 10 years to figure that out because when things weren't going good in 2008 when i was and, and, and i was really struggling because the market changed and i wasn't prepared for it i'm just telling you that having these accounts having money in them and not having to worry about taxes them it gives you peace of mind and sleeping well at night will make you have more success in every part of your life not just financials but with your daughter, Chris, with your wife, with your family, when you can sleep better at night. And this has made me and thousands of others sleep better at night. So I'll end on that. That's awesome. Well, Greg, we appreciate your time and you know you sharing your knowledge on you know self-directed IRAs. And I know a lot of people here just by show, you know, just to show Greg uh, you know, how much this means. Can any of you that have a self-directed IRA or any of you that are coming to the event in July, can you put an A-Y-E or I in the chat and then just say thank you to Greg for his time today. So we got a whole bunch of you coming and a whole bunch of these folks on here are already working with you and your team. So we thank you for that and we look forward to helping a lot more people take back control of their retirement funds with your help. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, folks. So yeah, just like we talked with the July event, you can come in person. You know, we got, I don't know how many seats we have left. I know there's about 15 left on the VIP. That's going to be the key one. But if you can't make it, then show up virtually. Steven, you're going to be doing something totally different on the virtual side. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and kind of how we're doing like a whole separate virtual uh, presentation on, on top of the live? 
I'd love for you to tell me what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> yeah, so Stephen doesn't even know what he's going to be doing, but this studio that I'm in, you can't really see it, but this is a- I heard it's going to be awesome. Yeah. 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 So what we're going to be doing is when the speakers speak live, it'll be next door and like I said, a TV station. We'll be broadcasting that live. Stephen's going to be moderating the, the Zoom, the, the virtual audience. He'll be kind of just talking in, in between speakers, but when the speakers are done, they're going to be ushered over here and then Stephen's going to interview them, which is only going to be available from the virtual side. So everybody live, you're going to be able to shake their hands, talk to them personally, spend some time with them, you know, and do that. But if you're virtually, you're going to have that same experience, but it's going to be done in an interview style that Stephen's going to be doing over in this studio here. So if you guys want to join us virtually, you're certainly welcome to do that. Many of you have joined us for our virtual three days. They're epic. You learn a ton. This will be the same, but a totally different experience. So that is pretty much all I have. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the best parts about a live event is you get access to all the speakers. You're networking the entire time together. You're getting to know them one-on-one. -on -one, and that's where those relationships are built. So what we're trying to do is by bringing them over after they speak on the virtual side, at least the people virtually have an opportunity to at least meet them, maybe get a couple of questions answered. It's definitely not the same as being in the room with them, but it's kind of the next best thing if you just can't make it to Buffalo. But I cannot stress enough how much better live events are than virtual events. So if there's anything you can do, get a plane ticket, drive there, whatever, but get to Buffalo because it's there, there's nothing like it out there virtually. So just make it happen. Uh, let's see, what was the calculator Greg suggested we look into? There's a whole bunch of them, Lewis. Um, I think the one he was talking about is a government website one. Uh, I can actually try to look for it real quick, uh, but it's, a, it's just called a compound interest calculator and the one I think he was referring to did he say it was on horizon here I'll just give you this one it's investor.gov I'll put it right in the chat here for you this is a really good one that allows you to figure out compounding so Lewis that's going to be in the chat here so if any of you are interested in that that's the calculator or one of the calculators that you can use I mean there's a whole bunch of them but that one's a really good one all right you know it, the other thing too like with with everything that's happening, you gotta be careful what you listen to. You know, I know a lot of people when we do our lives and when we do our calls, they're saying, oh, you know, I get this one guy all the time, he's messaging me on, on Facebook uh, DMs, and he's saying, is, did we find the bottom? Did we find the bottom? Should I, should I move, should I go all in? And I'm just like, no. And I'm like, secondarily, like, you're never gonna know where the bottom is. No one can time the market. It's not a timing thing, it's a preparation thing. If you, if you really are anxious to start buying in at these levels in the market or these levels of Bitcoin, just don't go all in. Start dollar cost averaging in. Put a little in like Bitcoin. I just, I just drip a little in. 2,000 here, 2,000 there, you know, as the market goes down. And, and I don't worry about it because I'm just buying it lower. And every time I buy at a lower price, I'm dollar cost averaging the cost basis down, which is how you make money. It's how Warren Buffett does it as well. But the problem is the news God forbid you listen to Kramer. If you listen to Kramer, let me give you the best advice Stephen and I can give you. Stop. The dude is wrong more than he's right. Actually, is the guy ever right, Stephen? Does he ever get it right? It just doesn't <laughs> seem like it. I mean, like, I think one of the most dangerous things there is right now is millennials that listen to Dave or listen to Kramer. Like, well, there's actually, it's funny you said that. Somebody sent me a video yesterday from, I don't know when this was, whenever Tesla, when did Tesla go public? Do you know the oh, year? I don't remember. Yeah. Well, whenever it was, it's the video, you know, 10 years ago, it looks like the video is 100 years old these days with technology. But anyway, it was a video of them interviewing Elon and, and they were like, hey, you know, Jim Cramer just came out, you know, and, and on, on CNBC and said that do not invest in, in Tesla. It's not going to make it. It's a terrible business plan. They, they, there's no way they're going to ever survive. And Elon's like, I don't know. And he's like, but Jim Cramer, he also said that people should invest in Bear Stearns and, and uh, whatever the other bank that, that collapsed, Lehman Brothers. He's like, so yeah, so listen to that guy or something like that. And it's just, so he's been wrong for so many years. It's just a joke at this point. Jim, are you serious? There's an inverse Kramer fund? Yeah, I bet it would be doing pretty well. And exactly. just if you good folks don't know what inverse means, it means the opposite pretty much. So whatever Jim's recommending, this fund is obviously doing the complete opposite. I love that. I don't know if that's a joke. But <laughs> uh, the other thing too, Dave Ramsey, somebody actually mentioned something about, yeah, right here. The, the one Greg mentioned was Dave Ramsey's site. Um, uh, oh, Andrew said that. So Dave Ramsey's got compound calculators, but please don't go to Dave Ramsey's site for much else other than if, you, if you're 
deep, deep in debt, you have no extra money, you're living paycheck to paycheck, Dave Ramsey's program might be good to get you to a point where you actually could work with us, where you actually can follow the first law of wealth, which is saving one-tenth of the money that you earn. Um, but the problem when you get into Dave Ramsey's circle, not that we dislike Dave Ramsey, we just, this is how I look at Dave Ramsey, he's the perfect person for the bird that has a broken wing. The bird that has a broken wing, just to give you the parallel, is, is the person that's living paycheck to paycheck, deep in debt. Dave Ramsey's system's great for the bird with the broken wing. He'll take you in, he'll put you in the cage, he'll show you how to get out and how to fix that and mend that broken wing. But here's the problem with Dave. The second your wing's fixed, and you're like, all right, Dave, I'm ready, I wanna go fly free. He won't let you out of the cage. You can only work with the Dave Ramsey advisors. And you know why they're Dave Ramsey advisors? Because they pay him. Wake up. Like, there's not nothing special about Dave Ramsey's advisors. I know a bunch of them. You know why they're Dave Ramsey's advisors? They write a check to Dave. That's it. They're probably not even good. They just pay his ass. Be careful what gurus and bullshit you follow, because there's an awful lot of, out there. Like, everybody's a guru in real estate nowadays. Everybody's a guru in crypto. Everybody's a guru in everything, because most of the gurus have never actually gone through a recession. You watch, give it a year. You know, it's kind of like those weight loss programs. Give it a year, we'll take off the weight. I think that's slim fast. Give it a year and probably 80% of all these talking heads that you see online will be gone because this recession will wipe them out because they don't understand how to keep the money that they've made. There's a big difference. And I remember at Secret Knock on stage, I asked the audience, I said, what's the difference between rich and wealthy? And the person that got it right, what, well, he's, he's part of a, a TV show, and Andrew, do you remember, what was his name? I, 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 he's from the movie Shameless, the Netflix, sh or the, I think it's HBO show Shameless, but he, he, he was like this kid, he's like 14 or 15, and he nailed it. The difference between rich and wealthy is the wealthy have figured out how to keep the money they make. The rich just flaunt it. You all see the rich, you see them online, they're the ones driving the well, they're usually not driving the Lambo, they're usually renting it for the day, posting photos. They wear the Gucci, the Chanel, and all that stuff to make themselves look like they have money, and guess what? Peel the onion, ask them to see a personal financial statement, and I bet you any money, they're broke is a joke. So one hit, and that's it, it's, it's game over. Many of them have already disappeared, like on TikTok, it's beautiful, we do TikToks, I can't even wear the haters need hug hat anymore, because the haters are pretty much gone. All the gurus that were experts, except for the guy this morning on What The F, he said, I'm the best. I made $5 million in crypto last year. Great. How much of it did you keep? Because crypto went to what, 68, and now it's at 20. How much did you actually keep? He didn't answer, he disappeared. So be careful who you take advice from. I like to say, if you're gonna get advice, take advice from people that have failed. Greg almost lost it all in 2008. I almost went bankrupt in 2008. Steven, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about 2008 and the impact, but ask and get advice from people that have failed. Because when you fail, you learn how not to fail again. If you've never failed and all you've done is made money, like how do you actually know how to advise people for what's coming? I don't think you do. I think you're guessing. So be very careful who you get advice from. Listen, folks, as we wrap this episode of the Wealth Webinar, we just want you to know that we, we respect you. We, we love that you spend time with us every week. If, if you're new to this and this is your first time, please make sure this isn't your last. We're always going to be talking about what's happening now and showing you and sharing with you the ways that you can mitigate risks and the ways that you can earn consistent, predictable income without taking all the risks that you have been. You know, we're always going to have our little sidekick here, Lazy Cash. He's our shop cat. He loves to join us for all these. So if you're an animal person, well, here he is. He's not bad to look at. He's a handsome little devil, uh, but he's here to give you advice. Actually, he's not. He's just here to be lazy. But it, it brings up a point about all that lazy money. I'm going to leave you with one thing. And, and I kind of want you to, I want you to let me know this. Right now, all of you know that your house that you live in is worth more than it was a couple years ago. Is that a fair statement in the chat? If you don't access that equity in your house, it's just like this cat, lazy. Okay, the money's sitting lazy on your couch doing nothing. Please, before it's too late, and time is ticking. You guys have always heard it, tick, tock tick tock if you don't get the equity out of your house you're not going to have any left to get out and that's going to be a massive lost opportunity because you're going to need some ammunition in this next opportunity that we're about to see it's called the recession
You're going to need ammunition, and the ammunition is money. So you need to get that money ready. Okay? You need to make sure that that money is accessible and ready to be used so you can pounce on opportunities when they present themselves. I would, I would argue that right now is a bit early for opportunities. Okay? But there's not enough blood in the streets, as, as Warren Buffett would say, but it's coming. Probably sooner than we all want. Probably sooner than I want. And I'm an opportunist. I kind of want this thing to happen because I just I want some opportunities, but it's going to suck. So get ready, folks. If you've been kind of pondering and putting it off to getting the equity out, please don't be somebody that joins us in six months from now on a wealth webinar saying, yeah, I went to get a home equity line and the bank says, we can't. It's happening, folks. It's happening already. Get the equity out of your house. And that's my last piece of advice. Stephen, do you have anything to close us out? I love it, man. It's all good stuff. If anybody has any other questions, just join us at 4.30 for Ask Me Anything. But I thought today was really, really good. I mean, it's... um. It always kind of gives me ideas of different like things that to do with self-directing, you know, and, and so this was really good today. Absolutely. And I'm just going to have one last question. Joe said, um, how can I do that if my bank doesn't offer it? In other words, how can he get a home equity line if his bank doesn't offer them? We've got a, a lady that we're doing a call with Tuesday on our huddle. Uh, she works for a very small bank. She's uh, from down in Tennessee. If you've ever talked to Tennessee people, that accent is addictive. Uh, and she's got a bank that specializes solely in home equity lines of credit, but Velocity Banking home equity lines. It's a cool platform. We're going to hear about it Tuesday. More than likely in the next week to two weeks, we'll bring her on for part of Wealth Webinar so you can all learn. So, you know, just stay tuned. Join us every week and we'll have her on and she probably can help you. If your bank doesn't, find a different bank. And that's pretty much the end of what it is. Eve, we'll be giving you the name. We got a couple really cool things we're going to be uh, bringing out to Wealth Webinar, including one last thing I'm going to bring up for those of you that are still here. We've got something that we're going to be launching. I dropped you know, the bomb a couple of weeks ago about it, but it's called the Blueprint Process. We are this close to launching that, so stay tuned. If you've ever wondered like what your next steps are based on what you're doing now, Blueprint is going to be the process we've created that is going to help guide you through what you're doing now and what you need to be doing next. And that is going to be coming soon. So stay tuned. We'll see you the next time. And thank you all for your time. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.